What's up, family? You're now tuned in live to Super Heavy Radio. I am your host, Isaiah the Duke of Tears, uh, along with my co-host, the leader of the Empress of 10,000 Years, uh, my brother, Father Assad, my brother, Rashawn, who just came in and checked us from uh, BKNY, um, and you. Uh, I want to give thanks and praise to everyone who, again, may have lost someone. We all lost someone majorly dear to all of us, whether we want to accept it or not, and we'll get into that in a minute. But um, to all of the ancestors and everybody, you know what I'm saying, and anybody who lost another loved one that maybe wasn't so worldwide famous, we definitely want to give you our condolences and let you know that they're in a better place, just like our sister. Um, where do we even begin, you know? Um, well, I would say that since really the Super Bowl, which I guess was last Sunday to now, has been a whirlwind of information, both positive and negative, both true and false, and everything else. But uh, before we begin and really go in, uh, first I definitely want to uh, send off condolences out to her family, uh, Miss Whitney, Elizabeth Houston, uh, her family, and especially her daughter, Bobby Christina who, you know what I mean, is definitely uh, the heir apparent to a powerful, powerful bloodline of ancient singers, you know what I mean, musicians and everything. And being that she is the culminating, the the daughter, or the fallen daughter of these two, of Asar and Arset, in the form of Bobby and Whitney, we definitely need to um, promote and and promote a violet light of energy. If you can imagine, whenever you think of her, if you can project a violet light of energy around her, please do that because she gonna need that now more than any other time of her life. Um, also, before we really get into it, um, just to put it out there real quick. What we're going to build on tonight, or what I'm about to build on tonight, is real. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I don't want to make it seem like me personally. I feel like I know exactly what happened. I don't ever want to put it out there that that's the case. Or to act like I'm some way more like connected than somebody who was on the ground when that shit happened. Although, while the whole thing was going down, I was getting literal reports from people who are super heroians, who are in the industry, who is calling me from the party, all this other shit, you know what I'm saying, that we'll get into too. But I just want to put it out there and say that what we're building on tonight, I'm building on it from the perspective of the observer, you know what I mean? Meaning the person on the outside of the whole situation that's peeping game who can get a somewhat more accurate depiction based upon the fact that I'm not emotionally, let's say, involved. The emotion that I've been feeling is really outrage and really uh, uh, disgust. You know what I'm saying? Not so much at the devil, because I expect the devil to do this. And again, to be clear, when I say the devil, I'm talking about anybody that's supporting Western civilization over their own indigenous culture. So that's black people, white people, everybody, but specifically I'm more disgusted with these niggas, you know what I'm saying? Not the NIGGAs, the NIGGRs who chose to participate in that ritual that we'll get to, too. But just to put it out there, none of us can really know the true nuance of what happened into the thing. But I will say that as we approach this rapture, all of this will be revealed. So... What I'm going to build on is all of the information and all of the different things that I've divined and put together over the past week, not just the past two days based upon what happened to her. It's very, very real. 
And I also want to put it out there that, you know, this is a time for us to start to, as they say, circle the wagon. Because what you and we all need to understand that what this country has shown us by this act, by this heinous act of murder, I don't give a damn what these niggas say. I don't give a damn what these niggas say. You mean to tell me every month? Every person that died who happens to be in Hollywood is a goddamn drug addict. And why the hell is it that now every time somebody in Hollywood dies, found dead, they found a prescription drug? How come ain't nobody dying of cocaine and none of that other shit no more? Because guess what? <clears throat> none of that stuff is really happening. They're actually killing people. The real drugs now that's killing people is the prescription drugs. These are the ones that's more powerful, more lethal, and do more fucked up shit to you than any bump of cocaine or heroin that you'll get because they're actually influencing and inputting in these drugs actual demonic entities. That's why pharmaceutical companies are all basically in tandem. This is why when you look at pharmaceutical companies on TV, the actual thing that you're taking the drug for is not even the shit that's going to help you. The drug that you're taking is there to kill you. These are suicide prescription drugs. These are not made to help or hinder. So you take a drug to stop you from sneezing, and then this drug shut down your whole liver and shit. So to say that this person went from doing cocaine, right, to then doing what, Vicodin, Percocet? Come on, man. Come on, man. But, again, we'll get to all of that in a minute. I'm just putting out the disclaimers out here just so that way, you know, when we put it out there and this thing, you start to see manifestations of what it is we've talked about on this show specifically. You know what I mean? You would know. But what I will say, but what I will say is the fact that we're at a stage now where we have to start to take all of this shit really seriously. This thing, this thing is getting to a point where it's beyond murder now. It's almost beyond ritual now. This sacrifice was the tipping point in history. You understand? In some ways, that's even more significant than what happened with Michael. But what they are showing you since the death of Michael, since the death of Etta James, since the death of Don Cornelius, since the death of Whitney Houston, since the imprisonment of of whatever rapper they want to lock up this week or whatever. What they're showing you is that as much as these niggas make money and as much as they use these niggas to promote agendas throughout the world and to get people caught up in the wrong shit, these people are totally expendable. You understand? They are totally expendable. There is no loyalty amongst these anymore. You understand? It used to be you could come up and shit happen and people not snitch. Nowadays, they have polluted the game so much that none of this now can actually be justified. So we are at the most auspicious time in history in which all karmic bets are off. You understand? All bets is off. Everything is up for grabs now. These niggas have crossed the line to such a degree now, you have to understand, there's different tipping points, there's different points in history where things happen and galvanize society in one way. When they killed this woman and they ritualized it how they did it, and these niggas was at the party, partying below her dead body while she on the fourth floor, they got your boy Ray J to be the bag man. We're going to get into all of this more specifics. I'm just giving the overview now. Got your man Ray J to be the bag man. Your, your, your home girl Brandy to be the emotional center for him because as a Capricorn, he's detached from his emotions, so he got to have his sister there to make him look like he's somewhat consolable. Meanwhile, she there looking like a straight walk-in, right, knowing damn well that they both came up based upon the car accident that happened in which she wound up killing somebody, didn't go to jail or whatever, didn't come up, but then at the same time, they wound up getting a reality show out of the deal, okay? So what we are going to get into tonight are the different parameters and the overall view of where this thing potentially is going 
based upon what has been happening in the material realm since the Super Bowl, okay? The Super Bowl basically was was the precursor to the end for them universally. That's why the grand ritual that happened when you saw this chick Madonna walking through with the other two harlots of Babylon, M.I.A. and Nicki Minaj, right? Coming through and they little horn are set outfits. Why today are going... Line and I'm looking at this old interview that, that Madonna did with Whitney Houston, and she was talking about how much she feared her, that she was intensely scared of Whitney Houston, that she was so intimidated and so whatever that at points when Whitney would come through, she would just kind of scurry to the back because she didn't really feel that she was on that woman's level. And there was a part of her that envied Whitney and told herself that when she got to that level, she would be able to control people like that. Listen to the language. Envy, control, okay? Now, this is coming from a goddamn hand. This is coming from a monarch slave herself. This is Madonna, okay? So if we go back now, historically, right, let's take it back to, I don't know, um, let's take it back to the 22nd Dynasty. In Kemet, right? What was going on during that time, right? You had an expansion of 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 uh, resources from the New Kingdom, right? You had the annexation of different uh, political societies, basically coming under the jurisdiction of the new, let's say, uh, Ptolemaic influenced Kemet, right? Then on the other hand, you got the influx of different nationalities of people who refer themselves as nationalities coming in and basically influencing the basic uh, structure. So the Paherus or the Nasuts, a.k.a. the pharaohs who existed or the pharaoh who was around at that time, one of the biggest things that was going on was this was the time in which the a instrument referred to as the lute or the ud was uh, brought forth. And the whole singing along with the instruments and all that stuff, all of that stuff kind of reached a, a, a focal point around this period. So all throughout the realm, there was an influx and a, and a, and a new energy. I don't say new energy, but an energy that was really a sort of a Renaissance type energy. Because remember, this is like towards the end of the New Kingdom. This towards like the beginning of the new, the later period. So this is right before everything gets switched up. So there's a universal period which everybody is basically rejoicing and coming up, and in that music plays a huge part of that. And there was a sister, again, named Nemes Bastet, who was uh, very poignant in that. They used to f- refer to her as the chief daughter of Amun because she was one of the most revered uh, hymns, because they didn't call them songs back then, they called them hymns. So in that, she traveled all over the ancient world. They have carvings, they have carvings and mentionings of her in different reliefs, not only in Kemet, but also in Samaria. But in Samaria, she falls under another name, right? Um, They also have uh, people in Phoenicia who talk about her. They also, there's also a Roman goddess named Cern, and she basically was the, the, the Roman depiction of this great goddess. Nemes Bastet. Around the 22nd dynasty, at the time of her death, she was interned into the Valley of the Kings. Now listen to what I said. She was interned into the Valley of the Kings, which means that she, that men and women were on a state of equality at the time that we talk about, and E. Wallace Bush and the rest of these so-called Egyptologists and archaeologists that are really just grave robbers and bonesmen, these niggas basically made it seem like we had a segregated society the same way Egypt, the same way uh, Europe is segregated, and that's not true. Because if that was the case, then we would not have women like this, the Queen and Miss Bestet, as well as Hatshepsut, as well as uh, uh, Nefertari, 
there's a couple of them that's buried there. But what they want to make it seem like is the fact that there was always a division between us as men and women. Now, remember I said that. The whole purpose of Egyptology was to create a pseudoscience in which people would generally take into account the Royal British Museum's view of archaeology and history by supplanting people who were not there in the beginning there. And so in the process of this, this great queen was locked up in the guided kings and everything for all these many years. So it wasn't until very recently that this thing goes down where we wind up, excuse me, it wasn't until January 17th that they do an archaeological dig, find in Kemet, in the Valley of the Kings, and they exhume this sarcophagi. And this sarcophagus, as they refer to it, or coffin to some people, uh, exhumed it and found this woman's body in pristine shape, mummified and everything, but totally pristine to the fact that the artifacts were still in there, gold, silver artifacts, all of that. And right when they said that they popped open the tomb, the first two things they seen was two giant eight foot image uh, statuettes of Bastet on each side of the tomb. Now Bastet or Bast is the goddess of the black is symbolized by the goddess the black cat, but she is also symbolic of dark matter, so that means the element of newt. She also represents the original woman who taps into her divine feminine nature or feline nature. Right, but still has the ability to maintain a human visage or visage. So she represents the primordial nature meeting the goddess essence culminating in the physical flesh of the original black woman. Therefore, she is perfect by design, is what our ancestors were saying about you, black woman. By design, you're perfect. You understand? So this woman, who was a, who was a priestess, though, she was not a priestess of Bastet. She was a priestess of Amun. Amun was called the great king or the king, right? So when we do the knowledge to this, they exhume this thing on January 17th, but they don't really put the shit out there in the media really until the day after the Super Bowl, which was Sunday, which was last Sunday, I think. So do the knowledge. The ritual now is Madonna, right, ushering in this whole pseudo-Super Bowl thing, right? Now, you know, Madonna is used as a portal, uh, as one of the harlots of Babylon, right? So as a harlot of Babylon, she has the ability to to get other women to use her archetype. He took it out. Right no, I mean the other one. No. Okay. So it got to the so it got to the point, like I said, where people have created. A, a system where these people are starting to look past what it is they have or what it is they were supposed to accomplish because in accomplishing, because in their accomplishments, which is to hide our history, to make it so that way we don't have any real genetic connection or memory or ancestral memory of who we were prior to this incarnation, they basically allowed this great goddess basically to be put forth. So when this chick winds up doing the ritual at the Super Bowl, right, she being brought forth in the uh, procession, that procession was an imitation of the procession that was brought forth when the goddess Nemes Beset would come and do the performances for the great Paharu. The same way that they came in, the line formation, they found a relief glyph in the same uh, tomb or pyramid in which that was basically frame for frame what went down on Sunday at the Super Bowl. Now, it was funny because Sunday was Super Bowl, what, 54? Super Bowl 54 is 9, right? Wait, let me make sure. Was the Super Bowl this year 50, 54, right? It was the 54th Super Bowl, right? 54th, right? That's 9. Whitney Houston's number, birth number is 9 because he was born on August 9th. Okay, so they exhumed this whole thing, put this woman through this ritual, 
I mean, put Madonna and them through this ritual. Then they use the two new harlots of Babylon, moon children, that have given their souls up to this shit. One of them comes from a line of, of people in Sri Lanka, this is MIA, whose family in them is known for killing white folk in mass, okay? They was the Sri Lankan um, rebellion party, whatever they was called, they put work in. They was like the Mau Mau in Africa and the General Kenyatta blesses that. These niggas was going all the way in. You know what I'm saying? On the British to the point so that way Sri Lanka could be free. Her father was one of the chief architects of that whole rebellion, MIA. So now she, I guess, decides she want to be famous or rap or whatever it is. So now she's in with these niggas. You understand? So in that now, this is them, their ability to get at him by turning her against her own people, right? But this is all a suggest a suggested thing. You have to understand, this is not necessarily a concerted effort. It's not like somebody's going to come and say, hey, you, if you want to make all this money, you got to do it like this, like this. No, everything is through seduction. The way to evil is through seducing you, through getting you to break down your own morals, your own scruples, make you doubt the people that love you, that's in your life around you, and make you dependent upon a artificial substance that has nothing to do with your true divine power. So that's her. Then on the other hand, you got the you got the uh, Frankenstein uh, that was created to replace Little Kim. So again, just when you thought Little Kim was fucked, was porcelain out, chopped up her face and did all this other shit, we didn't say nothing yet because they had this chick in the wings coming up and because she don't have no morals and she don't have no motherfucking scruples and none of that, she'll allow herself to be used in the ritual. So the same ritual that this chick managed, Madonna, did at the Grammy Awards where she got Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera and turned them both out as she was pretending to be Baron Sambi in that ritual because she was the one wearing the top hat. The other two girls had the chains around their necks, so they was acting like slaves of Sambi. So she was trying to invoke Sambi, which is also Anubis, okay, which is also Anput. And Anput is, excuse me, Anubis is Anput. Anput is the feminine aspect of Anubis. The feminine aspect of of uh. Anubis on the opposite side then of the opposite side of Amput then would also be Bastet, you understand? Which are all symbols of cosmic molecular melanin. So what you see these images of these gods and goddesses doing in ancient Kemet, in these reliefs that we've been studying all these years, is actually symbolically an image of what your melanin is doing within and for you every day. Every day. So let's look a little further. As we start to go in further, what we'll start to find is that um, prior to all that is going down, there were little things, again, connected to the Super Bowl that was putting this into a greater view. The fact that Clayley Clarkson sang the Super Bowl anthem, you know what I'm saying, basically sparked a big thing on Twitter. Which they was like, yo, she basically killed it. She bodied it. She was almost the best these white people put out there. Do you know Twitter got flooded with so many, like now, you, she was good, but Whitney is the ultimate. There will never be another Whitney. There will never be anybody sing that anthem like Whitney was. Whoop-de-whoop. You know that they got so much shit that they almost had to call out to get another server. Niggas almost crashed the whole shit to just come out there and say that Whitney is the best. This is this is Monday, the day they re-put out that they found Nemes Bastet, an ancient Comedian pop singer who was known throughout the world. So let me ask you, when have you, as long as you have been conscious, as long as you have been studying, as long as you've been reading all of these books, as long as you've been going to these lectures, when have you ever seen a lecturer, a book writer, or anybody put ancient Comedian life in the context of that they had they had their equivalent to pop star. When the last when you ever heard that? You never heard that until two thousand twelve. Until two thousand twelve. So what I'm saying 
is that specifically we are looking at the regeneration and rebirth of our system. Now, I know that there's mad people who have had, over the years, we've seen all the jokes about her and Bobby being crackheads and all this other shit. And some of us have made jokes about that. You know what I'm saying? Well, all is funny, you know what I'm saying, until somebody get hurt. Now that somebody hurt, everybody's talking shit about her, and now the same niggas is going to be bigging her up, which is what these hypocrites always do. But what we have to look into is the broader concept and the broader scope of what is being said and what's going on with this. The, the overall context is this. If we look at what was going on historically with her, we would look at the fact that, one, she's a Leo, but her Leo was also affected by her transiting moon. Now, a transiting moon in your natal sun means that the moon is in a transited state, meaning that it's moving from one state to the next, meaning that we're dealing with a cosmic or proverbial change in the basic nature of the sign and the energy that the sign produces, right? So within that now, we're talking about a a transiting moon which creates a natal sun return. So there was a part of her around the day of the 7th that started going through a phase in which she was starting to be confronted with different things that she may not have been with, she may not have wanted to be a part of. But there was a part of her that felt obligated to do so, and so there was a great pressure. That's what a transiting moon over her natal son of Leo, because she was a Leo with a Virgo rising and a moon in Aries. So what that would mean is that, one, she was a uh, very exalted, very powerful very expansive, very in the sun. You cannot ignore her. That's Leo, right? Then in her, she had the Virgo. The Virgo now is the energy in her that was able to analyze and know what people wanted from her and do the knowledge to what she needed to do to perfect her craft and get it to such a almost obsessive degree that she would sometimes sing so hard that her whole voice would go out. You understand? But that's not her trying to sing. That's her just going all out because Leos with Virgo placement like that will thrust themselves into it. You know what I'm saying? Will literally thrust themselves into it. But there's always a, a but or however. She had that moon in Aries. And women who have a moon in Aries are basically put in a position where they, that's like having a, that's like a man with a moon in cancer. Certain signs are more masculine polarity than feminine polarity. Aries is one of those signs. In the process of that, I did the knowledge too that she had a son. Her son sign was opposite her son, meaning that on one side, her son was at 16 degrees Leo, but then directly across that, but then directly across from that, um, her Aquarius son was in 18 degrees. So she was put in a position where she was meeting or being brought into a state where she was meeting almost a primordial aspect of herself. She felt that it was a part of her or this. I don't want to say she felt like this. What this says is that the placement says that there may have been feelings that something was not right and something was being dug up that was connected to her, some old shit. You understand? Now, all the years we've been seeing Whitney Houston on TV or whatever, whatever, recently, we know that she was basically getting herself together and, and getting the handle on the drug thing. But now, all they're talking about now is the fact that she was doing pres- prescription drugs or prescription pills. But when she died, you ain't never hear nothing about that. Just like when Michael Jackson died, you ain't never hear that nigga taking pills like that. Only thing you heard about him was the fact that they wanted us to believe that he was a pedophile, right? But he only became a pedophile or it was only a problem for him becoming a pedophile once he dominated and took over the music industry. 
you have to understand, Michael Jackson, who was the king of pop, Michael Jackson, who was the king of pop, was in a situation where he ran the music industry. There was nothing in the music industry that he was not getting money from, in a sense, when it came to that publishing. Because once he got the Beatles publishing, he was able to acquire publishing in mass. You understand? So he was owning people's music that he never even heard. People who was just starting a publishing company or coming in under somebody else's publishing company wound up having to pay him money, and he ain't even listening to no music. And they created a situation where there was a stranglehold. They couldn't put out any Beatles music without paying him. They couldn't create any new Beatles project without paying him. Paul McCartney had to pay him his publishing. You understand? Sir Paul McCartney, excuse me. Billy Shears, because <laughs> I still don't believe that's the real Paul, Paul McCartney, but that's an old school thing. We're at the stage, or well, she got to a stage where she realized that these people was pulling out old obligations on her, which is connected again to the old obligation or the old self. The old self, again, is her in a sense, resurrected from the past in the form of Nemes Bastet, because like like that, there was nobody there. And again, why would they just come out all of a sudden? They found it on January 17th. How come it wasn't big news then? How come it didn't come big news, really, until after she was dead? I mean, they revealed it again on Monday, but it really went into overdrive when we started talking about it on Facebook, and then I wound up seeing it on the news right after they did the segment on Whitney Houston. You see what I'm saying? So they're not saying, okay, this one is this one, or that this is her in a future incarnation, and this is her in a past incarnation, but this is what they're showing you by showing you one that represents the past and then showing her in the future. But in a sense, they both the past now because they both are physically not here. Think about that for a minute. Now, if this indeed was, if that indeed was the 54th Super Bowl, remember the last ritual they did in the Super Bowl with Janet Jackson. Now, that ritual with Janet Jackson was a Neftes ritual. Neftes is a foreign daughter. She basically, Neftes is the goddess Persephone in so-called Greek mythology. Persephone was the, what, I think the daughter of Zeus, no, the daughter of Hades. Excuse me, the daughter of Zeus and her, and a girlfriend of Hades. And what happened was she was supposed to marry Hades, and something happened, and they didn't say, and the wedding didn't go down. So Hades wound up kidnapping her and bringing her into the underworld. So then there was going to be a great war in which the gods was going to go down to the underworld and get Persephone. And then to save everybody, Persephone said, well, what we'll do, we'll do an equality. I'll spend six months of the year down here in hell and six months of the year up there in heaven with y'all. And then that became the thing. Now, Nephthys, just like Persephone, is always depicted with a crown looking to the left, right, depending on what image or who's drawing it, looking to the left, but always with one breast out. Always with one breast out. Now, you remember the ritual with, with, with Janet. Now, the colors of Hades is red and black. Red and black in modern context, when you do exology and flags, represent those nations that are down with anarchy, right? But Persephone's color was green. Now, when you look at the, the actual ritual that would happen with Justin Timberlake and this chick, Justin had on a green T-shirt, and she had on a black and red leather suit with a with a gold with a silver sun piercing around her nipple. So from then, I started to see the supernatural and Comedian influence over the bowl. Because from there, she caught mass flat. 
And then after that tour, after that whole thing, she started what she what she referred to as the witch you tour. She is supposed to be with you, but she pronounced it witch you. So it's she was she she spelled it W I T C H U, but it's like with you. But she said witch you. And in this whole tour, she was doing fatal masochistic rituals where she was tying black men up and whipping them with with uh, whips and all that other type of shit. Okay, very, very dominatrix, which, again, is that whole Nefti's realm. Because if she's spending six months in hell, if you do the ritual, if you do the knowledge to the symbolism of the ritual, when you're in hell, you got to be hellish. So what this also represents is the two-sided aspects of the feminine nature. You understand? The, 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 the beautiful queen and the harlot. You know what I'm saying? So... They created a different form of ritual now with Whitney, in a sense, due to the fact that they exhumed this thing, and based upon her transiting moon or whoever that got working through that, through Clive Davis or whoever, they wind up manifesting the instance to basically get this icon to switch places. Because this is also about distraction and diversion. The last time they did something like this, when they killed Michael, we reported that at that time, that was kind of done to take away from what was going on with China at the time because China had called in the note on a lot of the debt that was going on in the U.S., which then came as a result of the $1.2 trillion that they had squandered due to them selling contracts to China, security contracts, to also come over here and lock us down when things get crazy. And then use the money that China gave them to do that to then commit corporate and governmental espionage against China. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Which is kind of what started the precursor to this now. So, with these type of rituals and these type of grand situations, you got to understand that that timing is everything. Because when you slave yourself out to a certain magical and ritual system, you have to follow and go exactly by the numbers. Like I said, color by the numbers, you got to do everything within a certain frame. But they are not perfect. Therefore, everything they do always got the flaw in it because their intent is malefic from the jump. They know that. So they always have to use a righteous spirit as the mask for them to be able to couch the truthful agenda. So we want the entire world to love us. So what we're going to do is use the people that we've been oppressing all these years to be our goodwill ambassadors, per se, through the entertainment. And then at the same time, once we get in the door, get rid of them so that way we can be the one. This is, again, symbolized not only in what happened to the sister, but then let's look at her handler or the handler that's involved, Clive Davis. What is the what is the odds? What are the odds that lay down in a minute? Okay, I'll come and do it like that. Lay down. What are the odds that she would die at the party of her mentor at the same time her mentor was giving a party to uh, an annual party that brings forth and ushers in the whole so-called great Grammy ritual? The Grammy, right, or the Gram, may, uh, when the human body dies, the atomic weight and subatomic weight of the body stays the same. The only thing that changes structurally, though, is that there seems to be 21 grams that in all bodies winds up leaving. Scientists have deduced that this 21 grams that leaves the body from the um, point of death represents the soul, the weight of the soul. Right? 
Now, we can go into the numerical value of 21 and all of that, but essentially we're talking about the physical evidence of a non-physical thing departing the physical world in a way that can be monitored. So, like, if you want to find a black hole, for instance, you would find a star, you would point your telescope at a star, and then every so often go back to that star. If it gets to a point where that star gets unstable and that star is no longer there, what you're looking at, that empty space, is a black hole. So it's what's not there is what is most important more than what is there. So in that now, the soul that leaves or the soul that's discorporated is the soul that's discorporated is the actual is the actual structure of creation. You understand the soul, the eternal essence of who and what we are. So once that leaves the body, therefore the gram, or let's say in Grammy, represents the soul or the discorporation of the soul. The me then represents the ego, the me, the I, which, again, to be a Grammy Award-winning artist, there's an aspect of egomaniacal behavior you have to have in order to be recognized enough by them to be able to do that. So you've got to have a certain amount of dirt on you in order for them to trust you anyway to get in. So the very fact that this queen, who, again, was a Leo, with a moon in Aries and a Virgo rising, this chick was was very in control and very, people would like to make her out like she was weak, like she was crazy and all of that. She, she was very nervous based on these placements, but she was very uh, exacting and could be very testing with people to see what people's true motivations was because she always knew what hers was. So in that, this is not somebody who went into anything blindly. This is somebody who may have gotten to the point that the game got a bit too crazy and due to the circumstances was put in a position to be sacrificed, whether she know it or not, whether we want to accept it or not. But the very fact that this thing went down in this building, now, whenever they hit big people like that, they always got to do it in a grand way that has a effect on everybody, you understand? So, like, when they took out Jacob Astor, they, when they took out Jacob Astor, they took out the Titanic, you know what I'm saying? When they took out, um, when they took out the, uh, they always have to have, like, a, a, a means to usher out the soul because somebody like Whitney is so big and so humongous, you understand what I'm saying? You can't contain that. So all you can do is amplify that energy like a like a satellite dish or propel it out or channel it in some way in a manner. So when the word came down, we had I was getting texts from people who was at the party who said that they was just chilling and it seemed like everybody got the same text and everybody looked down at the same time and like everybody knew and then started talking about it and shit. So it was like almost uh based on what they telling me seemed like it was something that was already kind of everybody knew but her shit, you know, which based on the energy of the day, which was uh, moon square Pluto, was definitely on. And whenever the moon squares, whenever Pluto squares the moon, that's a negative influence affecting you, affecting your intuitive sense in a way where it's hard for you to see what's happening. Like for something's going on that's somewhat blocking your intuition to be able to divine and see what's really going on, whereas any other time it would be different. Everybody who was born in the 80s was uh, was basically born at the time when the Pluto again was in Libra, which is the reason why we're all going through and revisiting all of the things in the 80s now. So then again, now they use the tub. The tub in ritual programming is used to, again, divine information, both political and metaphysical from the subject, but it's also used as a conveyor 
of concentrated energy propels into a certain realm or dimension. That's why in Constantine, he had to almost drown her to death for her to be able to travel into the other realm, the hellish realm. But the time that she was in the realm seemed like forever to her, but it was only a second from the time that she was finally dunked and uh, lost consciousness. So the same thing, again, they want us to believe now, just like Brittany Murphy did in the tub, just like Marilyn Monroe did in the tub, just like Natalie Woods did in the tub, just like Jim Morrison did in the tub, just like uh, who's the other one? There's another one in the tub. It's like 80 people died in the tub the same way. Some of them died in the tub with no water. Some of them died in the tub with water, but they all died in the tub. Most of them died in the tub naked. What's the ritual with that? The ritual of that is you want a full contact of the experience. Therefore, you don't want clothes to inhibit whatever negative or positive charge you're emitting through the trauma that is being activated through the splash and the liquid in the water. Because water exists in all dimensions, everywhere. In some dimensions, it's more like quicksilver. In, in this dimension, it's more like liquid. In some dimensions, it may be yellow or blue or whatever, but it's still water. There has to be a lubricating agent because that is what existed at the beginning or prior to the Big Bang in what was called the endless world. But we'll get to that in a minute. So if we look at the players now, you have the quote-unquote industry. You have the quote-unquote government. You have the quote-unquote people. You have the quote-unquote fans, right? And you have the quote-unquote insiders. The insiders are the people who work in the government, who work in entertainment and media. This class of people occupy the positions of A&Rs, VPs, things like that. The people who did not have those positions, let's say brothers who started from the mailroom and worked their way up to president. Those people are people who are chosen to use, again, as a righteous tool to be able to shield the true intent of what the corporation is there to do, which is to exploit the black messiah and pervert the message of God through the oratory of greed art power of the original people. This power is then used to create a friendly space for the militarized power to be able to go into these countries and do whatever they want to do. Case in point, there was a situation where people were in Iraq <laughs> United States soldiers was over there trying to uh, bomb or get these arrows out of a certain town. So they tried bombing them, they tried shooting them, they tried gassing them, they tried everything, couldn't get these people out. So what they did was they got speakers and just played Lionel Richie all day for about three months straight, every day, all day, <coughs> about three months straight. They still didn't get the people out. But Lionel Richie's album started selling like crazy all over Arabia. <laughs> and that nigga started being invited to doing shows in Dubai for the president and the premier and everything else. He came up from that. You understand? Because the people know the difference between the art, God, and the the marketing, the company, the label. So somebody like Whitney, at a time when they may be uh, trying to prepare and they're gearing up for this World War Five thing, well, I call it World War Five. Most people call it World War Three, but I count the third. I count the Cold War as World War Three. So the fourth war was the uh, whole uh, 9/11 thing. This is World War Five now due to the fact that now they're bringing in the whole Chinese, Russia against the United States and Britain. So in order to take somebody like Whitney out in a situation like that, first you got to get somebody that she trusts, and then you got to get somebody who knows what emotional state she's in. That calls for a handler. 
that calls for somebody who comes to you at a certain time in your life when you are really down in your luck and actually does things to help you, but they're really helping you to get you dependent on them the same way whoever they helped you from was doing. Only now to get you in a debt and then they use a kill and guile as a way to conduce an outcome. So at this point, This whole thing now is happening in the Leo period because the same day that they re-announced the whole thing on Monday about the the uh, the ancient Tunisian pop singer, quote unquote, they uh, the void of course moon phased out and we went into Leo. So on the what is that? On the two, three, four. On the fourth day of Leo, on the fourth, fifth, sixth day of Leo is when the whole thing went down. You know what I'm saying? When it phased out and now went into uh, Virgo. Excuse me. It phased out on Wednesday. So within that period, right after that full moon retrograde in Saturn, the whole thing went sour on her. That's when she went to the party, everything was cool, and then whatever happened at the party or whatever, whoever she was confronted with or whatever went down happened, and then that's when she came out all messed up because who knows what happened. You don't know if the people all attacked her, beat her up, slapped her up on the way out. Like, you don't know how these things work because, again, we're not talking about music. We're not talking about business per se. We're talking about control and the the specific utilization of terror to produce people to do something creative, to force the melanin into a stressful situation, to make it produce something incredible. And so the fact that she was on the fourth floor, dead, at 3.43, they call somebody, wink, wink, calls the, at 3.43, someone from the entourage calls the hotel. At 3.46, the hotel calls 911. But at 3.50, the fire department was already upstairs. Why? Because fire department and the ambulance and these people was already on standby downstairs for the Clive Davis party. So I've seen police stand by outside of clubs and shit sometimes, but uh, ambulance and the fire department and all that. Now this is the same thing that went down when Biggie got hit. The fire department came and shut everything down, remember? So we're looking at a retrograde period in Saturn, the father, people not seeing people ignoring the truth and blocking a blessing and denying the lesson. You know what I'm saying? So at 350, they come inside, find her in the, in the, in the uh, bathtub dead. 355, they declare her dead. And then by 4 o'clock or whatever, the, the red carpet and all that is popping. <laughs> Everybody started robbing for the party. So by the time the party's in full swing, She's already dead on the fourth floor. There's no security tape. There's no division from the audience or anybody else. Nobody's coming out. It's very interesting. And the problem is that these things keep happening to our people. And our people, for some reason, don't want to take the time to look into the murder of their brothers and sisters. They just want to just look at it like, well, you don't really know it like that, so you just speculated, whatever. So what I'm speculating? At least I give a damn. At least I'm saying something. At least I care and figure that whatever these people are going to tell me is going to be a damn lie. And we all know it's a damn lie. We all know it's a damn lie. You make yourself want to believe the lie. You make yourself want to believe that shit is true. The truth, if it's true, it's just true. When you're in tune with yourself, you really know when you hear it. 
to the point I'm watching CNN and the reporter saying, well, this is the most strangest thing I've ever seen. Usually if something like this happens, they would sequester everybody and have the tape and all that. He said, well, no, people are coming in, they're auctioning a car. There's a woman in a ball just over here. You know, the paparazzi, people still arriving on the red carpet. Like, But the thing is, remember, I told you, my man was at the party before the shit popped off, and he was saying that everybody got the same text. So everybody knew before they got there. That's what the homie told me. And and the person, you know, he, the homie's right next to these people. So I'm doing a knowledge to that. I'm like, okay, this is definitely going on. So she's dead on the fourth floor, and these people were below her on the other side partying. I never seen Barry Gordy and, and Diane Russ happen to be together. These niggas was hugged up, kissing, and everything. Okay? The other odd thing is that the symbol, there's a giant symbol on the front of the Beverly Hills Hilton, and that symbol is a symbol of Uranus. The symbol of Uranus is also the symbol of the football goal or the goal post that you see in football that you kick the football through, which represents, again, the two legs of the original woman and the two pillars, Joaquin and Boaz, and when turned a certain way, represents the royal off degree, the 32nd degree. But this is Uranus, which is the planet of ultimate change, swift ultimate change. On the roof, then when you look at the building, how the whole, where the building is on the block, the building is on the southeast corner towards the, when you when you look at it from an aerial view, it's like a giant triangle. It's like a 90 degree angle, excuse me, with the period, with, with the hotel more towards the, the front, the uh, uh, right side, right corner of the uh, pyramid. It's like Dealey Plaza. It's like the, the tunnel of the armor. These are not coincidences. These are coincidences. You know what I'm saying? So 72 hours before this, she, she's at the party going through it, everything good. She come out the party, everything crazy. One of the last people to see is Ray J. This nigga in the party with a hood on, with his sister, with the only porcelain doll, vegetable all to look on her face, just blank, just not even there. Like, when you do the knowledge to, to another aspect of her chart that I was doing the knowledge to was that her transit in, uh, excuse me, her transit in part of fortune was on the descendant, and that definitely indicates other people or what other people want you to do or obligations to other people. You know what I mean? So, again, this is also because her nodal axis, when you did the knowledge, meaning where her rotation, where her, her the position in which one attunes themselves to the energies of a specific sphere of planet and influence because indeed it is not these planets influencing us more so than it's us influencing them or using the influence that they give to do whatever we want. Some astrologers look at astrology from a perspective, especially Western and, and trans and Gothic type scholars like the people we talk about, the adversaries, they look at it as if these planets actually can control. They do they use the planets in a form of a controlling energy. Therefore it's a more directed focused aspect due to the the, the plotting and the symmetry of setting up, getting you to hang yourself, creating a situation where you don't see any way out other than that. That is what we've been talking about on the show is the isolation of the apoptosis gene, which is a programmed cellular death memory that can come out through trauma-based programming where the person gets to such a point that they turn into a suicide bomb. If you notice, only Arab people are encoded with that type of agenda. Japanese people used to have it. Japanese people have it, though, too. 
but it's not as as used, I think, in the culture as much as it is in that in the Arabs. And that is due to the intense programming that was done in the years under Reagan. They love Reagan, but Reagan these white people love Reagan, but Reagan was the one who destroyed the industrial infrastructure. He's the one who sent all the jobs overseas. Him. So the same nigga they building all of that is the same one. So when this dude compared himself to Reagan, again, what are you what are you saying to me? Well actually he ain't saying nothing to me. <laughs> but uh getting back to the situation, her ascendant and descendant axes were basically on the same line. You know what I'm saying? So if you think about a clock and the arms moving in a certain symmetry to tell you different times, imagine everything at all the clock or all the clock just stopping where uh Stopping at uh, 2.45, like straight across, you know. <clears throat> Therefore, she was put in a position, again, based upon these influences, which relates to when associates with who, is, who they associate with immediately, which are usually negative, who happen to be negative influences based upon Saturnian retrograde that was going on, too. This means also means someone else was involved. That's all I'm saying. You know what I mean? So, again, they wanted to believe now that she was a prescription drug addict when they said that she was a cocaine addict. All the jokes I heard was about her sniffing cocaine. I never heard, or drinking. I never heard no jokes about her being a, a pill popper. So now she's a pill popper like Michael's a pill popper or happened to be a pill popper after he was a pedophile. But he only became a pedophile again or was was uh outed as being that or whatever you want to believe when he basically became the king of all music again. <clears throat> By owning everybody. That's why he didn't have to put no money out. Why why would the, why would these, these these entertainers, why would these really sh- these shakes and these people give this man mm-hmm. millions of dollars to not even do music, just to chill with them? Why 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 would how could he be broke? So if you loved all over the world, is it really that necessary to be loved by all these crazy people over here? Because they have made everybody over here. America is the only arrogant place in the world where they have the World Series here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you make it here, you make it everywhere because they have created a system where this form of anglophile uh Anarchy is masked by the righteous endeavors of the American people and of the original people, indigenous people specifically. So her transiting moon also passing over her natal Mars represents an attack. That's an attack placement. Another funny thing is that CNN reported her body found in New York at 8.55. Then they reported they had it in New York. It was found in Newark, New Jersey at 11.55. Then it was finally reported that she was in the Beverly Hills Hotel in the fourth floor at 3.55. But the interesting thing is that she was born at 8.55 in New Jersey, but that's the time they gave her, they found her in New York. How could one person be in three different places, (laughs) dead in three different places at the same time? Then for some reason they re put out the story of Bobby Brown's um father dying. But he had died before that. But they had just put it out again when this happened for what? To almost compound it to everybody to make it seem like not only did his ex wife die, but his father died the same day too and his daughter's in the hospital. See what happens when two black people stay together? That's the underlying thing, man. They only started hating on her when she got with that black man. Based on her chart, reading her chart and his heart, her, his chart together, the compatibility, just as an astrologer, <laughs> she she was she was kicking his ass more than he was kicking hers. 
Because, again, we're talking about somebody who sold over 368 million records. There's 4 billion, 4 billion, 400 million people on the planet. Right? So 368 million of those people all know in Houston. And coming up, I didn't really like her music like that. It was cool, but it was so much a staple and part of, like, you know, how many barbecues you went to that was playing her song. Or you went to somebody's house and her video was on TV. Or you walked down the street, somebody went and went to Houston for sure. Regardless of what it was, regardless of how pop or whatever they made her, I didn't necessarily look at her as anything other than like a black woman. But back then, we wasn't, I was really conscious of all of the nuances of what was going on with her image and all of that other stuff. But in that, that was the time when she ruled. She ruled the 80s. Who, who was it? It was Whitney, Prince, Michael. That's it. It was white people, but in the end, it was Whitney, Prince, Michael, and rappers. That's it. That's it. Lionel. But again, they, they had to break the Commodores up to get him. And then what? They get him to have a baby with uh, Paris Hilton mother and then adopt the baby as his daughter. This is all how these people run their society. They will deny all of this stuff to the hill. And they're supposed to because that's how they are able to rule and do the things that they're doing in their society, which has nothing to do with us. It becomes our problem when they consistently create an environment where our great Great lights are taken for the value to cover something else. So while all of this is going on, remember, it's always three-card money. It's always why you're looking at this as two other shells or two other. It's three-card money with these dudes, but instead of playing with shells, they're playing with skulls. You know what I'm saying? And there's always something else under the skull, other two skulls. So under the other skull is, at the same time this is going on, the premiere of, of uh, North Korea, Kim Jong-un, who just took over from Kim Jong-il, um, allegedly just hit going to Beijing. This starts in a Chinese media site, similar to kind of like Twitter, and then blows up into the Western media, and then immediately they start putting out stuff saying that it's not true. But when they show the satellite pictures of it, you see the embassy where he at, and it's like in front of the embassy, it's like mad cars. <laughs> like ugly people. So, you know, whether that happened or not, that strategically is something that is relevant in intelligence due to what just happened with everything else. Because you have to remember, you are in an environment that is at DEFCON 3, let's say. So these people are gearing up for a world war that's basically going to pop off after March. So in that, the structure of their society has to become more militarized, and in that they have to ease the blow that much more by getting the people palpable or, or, or softening them up for the, for the blow. You know what I'm saying? So this is how one of the ways they do it. So they started with the ritual with Etta Jane. When you look at the image of Shu uh, uh, set or nuts and pep nuts, where you have the man in the middle and then the woman on the, either side of him, and they're walking together, that is the image of, let's say, Don in the middle, Edda on the one side, and Whitney on the next. Because if you do the knowledge now, this represents the 40s, the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Don represents the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Whitney's represent the 80s, 90s, and 2Gs. So in killing all three of them, they killed an aspect of black musical history. By assassinating them, they killed an accumulated history of the past, let's say, from 1933 to 2012. So that way they can set up the new luminary black music who's going to do black music, the white people like Adele, who starts getting all the awards the same way Lauren Hill got. Now, this bitch then came up over two rituals, Amy Winehouse and Whitney Houston. Say I'm lying. Say what I'm saying is just some conspiracy bullshit that has nothing to do with what, what's really going on in the world. Say what I'm saying is not important enough for somebody to investigate it to its conclusion. They can't because they down with it. 
every one of these niggas that you've seen that was at that party is down with it. You understand what I'm saying? From Cry Davis down. You understand what I'm saying? In some way, you got to be because the reverence was not paid, man. That's how I know the creator with with the, the music that I'm doing or I want to do is not that. That's why I'm not. If, can you imagine being there, son? Can you imagine being there? And them telling you that um, Whitney Houston was was dead upstairs. And what you do? You just be like, oh, okay, cool. And then you go have a drink or smoke a blunt. You wouldn't try to go upstairs in the elevator. You wouldn't try to go see what's going on, especially if the police ain't stopping nothing. They said the police would just let niggas walk in and out. So the killer or who or the killer or the killer's mother, the killer's mother's father or whoever could just be walking in and out this way and nobody say nothing. So if that's the case, how come the real niggas, right? The G's, right? This is when they supposed to go upstairs and see what's going on. But these niggas don't have no power. These niggas would rather shoot and kill each other. This has nothing to do with 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 people listening to what I'm saying or not listening to what I'm saying or or me trying to capitalize it. No, this has nothing to do with that, yo. And people who know and have been down with us from the beginning know the work that we've been putting in with this and that this ain't nothing new. We've been this. But this specific instance, y'all, is the tipping point. Mark my words, man. These people have created the most utmost sense, not only due to the fact of what they're trying to do in terms of rewriting history and taking out aspects of our history symbolically and replanting it by people who are doing our music and because they have they have puppets and minstrels like Whitney, like uh, uh, Nicki Minaj, who will now come in as the as the as the widowed harlot. She's the widowed harlot now because her mother, or her lover, you see what I'm saying? Not saying that they were lovers, but what they do in a ritual is that the mother goddess that brings them in, or the one above you who know the story. You got to do the knowledge with them. They got to put you on to a certain degree. So that, in a sense, becomes like your Mentor, you understand? So, symbolically, if not for anything, but the science in their new shit is that you have to kill your mentor to get on. So that's why she had to to not only replace Little Kim, but she had to kill her, you understand, to become that, to become Roman, you know what I'm saying, in which now she is the official, let's say, harlot of the MK slash Malta Knights, uh, slash form of porcelain doll programming that they are now trying to infuse into the minds of these black women. And she has already been blessed by their Madonna. They're married in the ritual that happened at the beginning of this grand sending off of sending off and resurrection of Nemes Bassett, a.k.a. Whitney Houston. Brother named uh, Gary sent me uh, some knowledge on it too to add on, where he did the knowledge that Whitney Houston's first two names are surnames, or two first names that actually became a surname. You understand? So she basically had two first names as well. Her name also Whitney. Retney is old Sax or old Saxon meaning black Saxon for um white or 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 uh mid white or like a muted white. And then Houston or Houston or Houston or Houston is is a uh, house or place or island. Do you know that there is a place called White Island. So that means Whitney Houston is White Island. There is a place 
off of the coast of New Zealand that was found by Captain Cook that is called White Island that is approximately 48 miles from New Zealand, the main base. And the indigenous people there were called the Mori. And the Mori worshipped a, a wind goddess named uh, Wootna or, or Wootna. Now, in Old German, there's a term Wootna or name Wootna which is connected to a book called Unexplained Faces in Ancient America by a guy named Alexander von Wuthenau. And the Wuthenaus were a, a subfamily of a group of old Bavarian Moorish families called the Pappenheim. So, again, our sister showing you whether we realize it or not, whether we feel it's significant or not, there's always some sort of ancestral connection that's so out there already. So the fact that this is 48 miles away in this white island, and then also the fact that, um, again, her name is Whitney Houston in that sense, and the fact that the white people try to create an island around this woman and use her as their face of the 80s to help promote Glasnost and whatever else, free trade, the big party, when they was all getting paid, the whole well, greed is good, Wall Street, all of that. I mean, it was okay to shit on everybody and feel okay about it and whatever because it was still a class system. But within that, there was still a structure where we still had a community. Our community is so fractured. Niggas are so fake that they can't even fathom. They have killed so many great original and non-original people the same way that people can't, keep up emotionally. So what they do is create altars within themselves to be fake, to allow the information not to penetrate them in any way. Come on. Um, not yet. So all of this is going down, son. I'm saying all of this. We're putting a lot of this together. Then I did the nods to, again, like I said, the hot tub time machine in which these bathtubs are used, to the point where Brittany Murphy, they killed this woman and then killed the man. He died a year to the day that they killed her because he was a handler because once the the subject died, a handler got to go because now his job was specifically there to handle her. So now that he's not there, he could go rogue and just start talking. So how him? How did he die? A bunch of prescription pills. How everybody died with the same damn pills, man? How she said they died with the same pills? I saw Michael Clayton. I saw how y'all killed this dude and dropped him in the pan. Dropped him in his pan. Dropped him in his pan. Dropped him in his pan. They all did. It's killing everybody. Meaning the drug company killing everybody legally. They come out with a drug in April. By next April, they're coming out with the lawsuit, how you get paid or for taking the drug at night. Like, what kind of racket is that? But then the nigga on the street that's selling an a ounce or whatever he's selling, you want to lock him up. So, again, this brings in the drugs. Because the new shit that's going to come out of this whole health pro thing is that they want to promote the legalization of the hard narcotic drugs, cocaine and all that type of stuff. So what do they do? How do they inject that into the consciousness real quick in a manner for people to face the trauma that they in and now have to deal with that? They get somebody like Tony Bennett to say, hey, well, he automatically is how ill the white man is. He automatically, she dead upstairs. No respect. Oh, she probably died of drugs anyway. We should just then legalize drugs and we would never have this problem. And do you know niggas clap for that shit? Nobody rushed him. No, none of these rappers, none of these, none of these so, so-called real niggas who knew this woman, who this woman took care of, whether she was a crackhead or not. I don't know one person in this country. You show me a person who say that they ain't got, or a being, or a human, or whatever you want to call them, an individual or a, a entity that has not been affected in some way by crack or cocaine or any type of drug, and I'll show you a liar. 
especially white people, because there's more of them on crack and meth and this and that than anybody else, but they ain't the ones doing the time. where they would do time and take time away from us and add more time to themselves. So the same ritual in which Lauren Hill was the first one to do that, then she gets destroyed. Then uh, who's the next one to do it? Alicia Keys come out, but now she's the next parent because she's the replacement for Whitney. Because Whitney started doing things like going up and hooking up with the black Israelites over in, in Jerusalem and going to the waters of Galilee and shit like that. Beyonce ain't doing that. She going to Croatia. You know what I'm saying? And what's the first thing black people saying? Oh, she crazy. Look at her. She in a she wearing a, a sari. He got a poofy on. You ain't you ain't never gonna see this nigga. This, my man, again, the, the, another home told me he's like, yo, this, this nigga Jay Z can't go back to Africa. Them Africans already know that whole water scan shit went down. Man, people died over that shit. So he barred. You know what I'm saying? And you know, them niggas take it to the next level <laughs> with that vendetta shit. So this is what I'm trying to say, man. And it was set up to help dissuade and distract the American populace from what they was really doing and to line their pockets and find more ways to enslave and adopt the talent of original people and own it, specifically own it. So when I say that Jews own and run the record industry at the highest levels, I'm telling the truth. But because I use the word Jew with a little emphasis, it comes off like I don't like Jews or people who call themselves Jews. That's not true. I have people and I know people who are that, who are good people who happen to be white and happen to be Jewish. And until they do something to me to show me that, you see what I'm saying, I'm not going to put that on them. Just like I'm not going to just assume or put it on a black man and just because he's black, he's going to find a way to, to double cross me. Because I know where I am. So with however people want to interpret that and pattern that is on them. But the more you pay attention to how people take what you're saying and all that all the time, Etiquette is one thing, manners is another thing. But when you start to cater the truth based upon you trying to obtain a certain physical material gain that is fleeting, you have given your soul to the same entity that you make a record of shit talking about that you wish you could give it all back. That's bullshit, man. How many years you've been watching videos, watching these niggas just throw money in your face, tell you ain't shit, talk about fucking your girl and all of that? And I have to be vulgar because at certain times, the only way to emphasize the exact nature a fury of what I'm saying is to use it because that's the only way that some people can understand how serious this is. Because if they could do this to her, they they still doing it. Other if they could do it to her, they still doing it. He wasn't around Bobby and them at the end. Because he loved her and he wasn't down with it. And he know and we all know that when she got with them, that's when they started shitting on her, man. They wanted her to be the other cop. And she flipped it on them, nigga. She said, yes, I'm going to get the money. I'm going well to do that. But you know what? I'm with Houston. I get with the fuck I want to get. And I'm going to be with this black man. That was a movie, nigga. <laughs> that's the type of bitch she was. You know what I'm saying? Her, I see my aunt. The same aunt that they were saying was crazy when I was growing up, and I shouldn't know this. And now this is the same aunt holding me down in the grip, fighting my mother for trying to take this state and cut everybody out the damn, the damn uh, will and safe deposit shit that's going on. Like that's how real I keep it. So niggas can't tell me that it's just based upon something of ego or anything. This is about our family, our children. What happens when you put you you want to put your child in that shit? You want to put your child in that? They show you what they do to these little kids, man. Look at princess and toddlers and all that. That's porcelain doll programming. 
people think I'm just making these tapes just to what? Just to just to talk? <laughs> just to talk about this shit that no, this is what they the school is a military installation, man. Rich people don't send their children to public school. So whether they white or black, they get so right, man. <laughs> I'm eating these grapes. They're like the grapes of rap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just disgusted. Like a, that's what it is. Like when it when when this shit went down, when this shit went down and that shit went, I I vomited. I wanted to vomit. You understand? I mean, Brian. I flew up when I heard this. It wasn't the death didn't even rock me like that. It wasn't even the death that was the problem. Because I already knew they what that we all knew what that was. These niggas was partying. Kim Kardashian raped everybody, and this is just what Pac said when you read that interview for Vibe magazine. He said he got to the spot and he got shot and went upstairs, and they was all in the room together, just looking at this nigga like, oh shit, like surprise. And there's an instance on film when Whitney came on stage before the whole shit went down. And was kind of shocked. He was he was like on some shook shit because Monica was up there too, and you know she stay in the ritual. That bitch, you can't get with her because you'll die. Like people die around her. <laughs> Candy birds too. But specifically speaking, this is how the energy has pervaded to the point now where the newscaster, the news, the white woman on the news is saying, I now. It's, it's unheard of. Like, where's this? What's going on? Like, it's, it's odd. There's no yellow tape. It's not treated as a as a crime scene almost. Like, people are walking in and out. Like, so when these niggas now, after a while, talking about that they got to do this for evidence and collect the evidence. How are you going to collect the evidence when the crime scene been the tangible way? You could watch one episode of NCI and know the real shit on that, man. How many cops shows you to watch in your whole life? You know, first thing, you don't walk in my crime scene. You 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 stay out. When I when the detective come, everybody go. Why? Because the detective is the one that got to do the knowledge. The killer could the killers at the party. Excuse me, let me rephrase that. The killers. Because whether it was one person or two person, it's it's them. We're talking about the proverbial they. We're talking about the 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 group, the insiders, the 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 ones. Who have no conscience about this shit. I'm not talking about the ones who do. I'm talking about the and the ones who do got to start to do real shit. One thing I'll say is that when someone that you love passes away tragically like that, or just I'm talking like not at like 68, 72. I'm talking like 48, like not even 50 years old. That is not a long time to live. You see, you're still young. When somebody dies that abruptly like that and you were intimate with them and you know them and you do like you knew this mother like there's a natural ebb and flow of actions, intentions and reactions. It is not normal reaction to be around a lot of people when you are in a climactic shock state like that. Or when you are in you know, something somebody dies. You don't go in the middle of a party to, to meet your friend, your mother, anybody. You call the motherfucker in the party and you say, yo, come out this bitch right now because I got something to tell you. And if you're so caught up, you don't want to run into nobody you like. You don't want to come off wrong. You don't want to be at a party. So to me, it's like, okay, I, I, I feel you. You know, I said, I was like, nah, Ray J can't be down. Then I see these pictures of him at the party, and I said, this Capricorn manifesting motherfucker sitting in a fucking party talking about Randy with our doe eyes. Hmm, I'm here consoling. I said, look, even if that's what you're telling yourself, do that shit outside hell in a cab because it's not the right time. You just need to make phone calls. You need to be with family. 
you need to get out of it or just make it or, or or just make an announcement and be like, yo, we gotta shut this shit down and do a twenty minute assignment. I saw a lot of pictures of celebration. Almost like photographers were like, Let's really capture the moment of how these niggas are feeling just to implant the celebration of like the great mother. You know what I'm saying? Even if it's you, God forbid Elvis Presley died, you know what I'm saying, when they're all at a party. You can, if, if that was a party that was hosted by P.I. and fucking yeah. Big Crit, yeah. them niggas would have been shut that shit down. Yeah. They'd have been shut it down talking about the rappers have something to do with it and how dare they, the disrespect. But if it's Clyde Davis' party, it's all better. And I, all I'm saying is that I'm not saying any, you know, specifically throwing no rocks at anyone because no. everybody is guilty. No. You don't, you can't be in a party when somebody that you care about is dead. You can't be like, fuck that. Let me get that one. Let me get that two shots of Patrol. Like, yo, son, you heard? That's fucked up. Yo, that was my homegirl. Yo, let me get another shot. You just, or even okay. sitting there, sitting there, like yeah. crying. Don't cry in the party. Like, come on, go home and cry. So that's just really, you know, that's really what solidified it for me. Because I've been on some denial, denial. No, he ain't down. I see you telling me too much. No, honey, no. To the point that then when you see the evidence and the white woman on the news and then this other brother who's, um, he's a brother on CNN. He's a little flame, Don, Le- Don Levin. He's a, he's a, dude, a, a good dude in terms of newscasting, though, because he always, he really be trying to keep it real. Because he's like, well, you know, I suck dick, so at least I can be, you know, loyal to y'all, which is kind of interesting. But anyway, he was like, yo, he was like, I can't believe this. He was just basically, uh, he said she was basically, uh, um, she died. So I was like, you want to say she was murdered because it doesn't make sense. He was like, and it doesn't make sense. Like, nobody is stopping this party. It's in the same hotel. He kept making such obvious, like, I can't believe this is going on. But nobody else, nobody at the party seems to have a problem with it. And that's when I knew, okay, this is really whack. This is just like, and this year shows me the, the tomb, and I saw him digging it up, and I was like, what's that? Oh, wow. And I said, okay, okay. I said, this year, didn't they just dig up some Egyptian tomb? And he said, yeah. And I said, okay, so that's the tomb they're putting her body in, basically. Exactly. And she was like, why would you say, wow, Selena? I said, because that's why they did it. Why if you found it, uh, uh, why if you found, it's in like Matlock, if you find uh, a coffin in any basic <laughs> so Nancy Drew. You find a coffin a month predating the time somebody dies, and then okay, let's just we're not going to say that we 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 made this porcelain pink coffin for you. So then a week, you know, you die. Unfortunately, the day after you pass, somebody's like, oh, guess what? We have this pink porcelain coffin in your exact weight, size, measurement that. And this is the question. Wait, 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 wait. Where are they doing with the, the, the other mummified body? The past version of her. The, the past version and sexually of her. Because as soon as he, you know, I, I thought about the coffin, I said, oh, that's a coffin that they wanted to let us know just on some joke shit. Yeah, we're we're, we're going to put her in there. Yeah. I said, no, they can't do that. Gosh. That's so disrespectful. I said, well, they already disrespected it. It's not to say that they can't put her in an old home so, and talk about it. So, I want to see her body because, you know, they love preserving the body instead of just mm-hmm. cremating it and putting so it to the rest. Eight but, but Saturday, okay, let's say, let's say they let's say they keep the body. Long. Are you going to show her in, like, a 10,000 coffin going into the floor and then are they going to dig it up the next day and put her in the other one? You know, these people, it's horrible. It's horrible they what I see. They just gave back Lucy's Oh, they just gave back, and um, my whole thing is, is, like, you know, there's so many black women out there that are, that be, you know, really, really like, no, the government's good. You know, if the bus comes by, just trust. You just, you know, I really, if there's any buses that pull up for us, please tell them you're good and don't go. You know, even if they say, well, you're going to die here, I'd rather, you know, it's, for real, because these people, they'll lie to you, man. I'm telling you, they'll lie to you. They really will lie to you. And it happens every day. Whitney Houston is, you know, so special. But there are so many unspoken heroes that you just wonder, well, how did that just happen? Why did they just, why? 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 I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. According to the Zohar and according to modern science, which is based upon the not only the Zohar but the where it came from, 
Moses Abelafia and these people that they talk about as the predated people started to actually detect it orally and start to, you know, flip it and bounce and do the things they did with it in the old Moorish Empire, specifically in Granada. As you ever understand, all modern Kabbalic, Kabbalistic understanding, all modern science came out of this period that was that was reached its height, I think, in places like Granada and Salamanca and places like that, Malagra and, um, you know, these places. But at the same time, they were happening over here with people like Benjamin Banneker Bay and, and his family and the original uh, Narragansetts and the uh, Lenny Lenape and the Wabanaki, the Moors of the Watagon Confederation. These types of individuals, these Moors existed. So we had this predated knowledge of everything. And Zohar talks about things like cholesterol and shit like that. It talks about how melanin forms itself. It talks about how many hairs that's in the beard of the original man and all of that. When you really get into it, call the Book of the Rose, get into it. But science says approximately 15 billion years ago, the universe came into being, which manifested before that from nothing. No time, no space. The universe began in a single point, which they refer to in quantum physics as a singularity, what we call God, what we also refer to as the locus corellius, the little black dot or the duot in the center of the pineal organ that makes the pineal organ function. This point was surrounded by nothingness. It had no width, no depth, or length. This speck contained the whole of space, time, and matter. The point basically erupted into an explosion of unimaginable force, expanding at the speed of light. Zohar basically says the universe was created out of nothing. upon him referred to as the triple state of darkness is called the endless world. The endless world was filled with infinite light that is infinite light in the form of translucent ultraviolet darkness that manifested in every spectrum in every spectrum of light for that Beyond this point, at the point that the locus corellius takes form is the beginning of what we perceive as physical reality and life, which is a mirror of the beginning of all life that ever began at every time that ever existed. And the song of creation that allowed that light to be transmitted was put in the light or locus corellius of all of us. Therefore, like I said, after the light, after the contraction, the endless world issued forth a ray of light. This is why their harlot Madonna created the song Ray of Light that used and was full of all of these light trails and roller coasters and stuff because they're trying to show you how the light of their Kabbalistic intent is transmitting itself down into the reality through music. Again, the song of creation by mirroring or mimicking it based upon supernatural or satanic intent. Therefore, the, therefore, after the contraction, the endless world issued forth this ray of light. This ray of light, Ra, ray of light, then expanded rapidly. All matter emanated from that point. This is basically from the 13th century, the Zohar Kabbalah of, ancient, of the ancient Moorish Empire, that was associated uh, associated in Europa. Which is darkness. Then we have creation, which is like light and receiving. Then we have the physical world. And recognize itself. This is why when you are recording 
you have to be in a closed area because your energy or the songs, the nature of music and the nature of sound is to travel. That's all it does. So the more the sound is imbued with a certain intent, the more it travels, the more people are influenced by it. And the more you can then use what you couch in that sound and in that travel to be able to extend your dominion over this. When it used to be, like, I think everybody should do music. Everybody should write an album. Right? Everybody should sing a song. Everybody should do something creative because that's you expressing your love of God, man. They took that away from you, too. You let them get that, too. You let them make you think that you got to sign up with them, that you got to get this person's permission, that you got to get this rid of paper, this other shit or whatever to do to get them to say that you okay to be able to do what you want to do anyway. Of course they're going to rule over us because they understand how this thing works. And we still, if anything, they understand that. And I think that's really the only thing they understand. Everything else is there, but they do understand how it should operate. We are, we are then born with the intent of filling ourselves with the essence of the endless world, the place that's not seen, the stuff that you can't touch. That's the intuition realm. That's the realm that you listen to, and when you don't listen to, everybody that ever didn't listen to their intuition, whenever they tell a story of how or what happened, they always say, you know, and I knew that in the beginning, but I did it anyway. So if you stop or we stop saying that and doing that and live in the intuition, then that means you live in the endless world. The endless world is filled with, with miracles and dreams and creativity and songs and healing and magic and metaphysicalness and and whatever you want to be and do. That's 99% of, of the shit that exists on the outside of what we perceive as creation. This is the stuff that people are praying for to get into when they die. This is the shit that you are in or are in right now. <laughs> you just don't realize it. Then is the 1% realm that's basically just controlled by the five. What time you got to be there, how big the apartment is, how long it's going to take you to get there. That's time, space, and motion. you locked in. Because physical reality is a place that you come to work it out. And it's also a place that you can make whatever you want. But this is the only place that you got to wait for something. But the longer you wait for something, when you get it, the more you appreciate it. You see how it works? We're looking at it like reality is what they say it is or what people try to make it. No, reality is what you are right now. Therefore, reality is as or is what you are, not as it is. So who said that you was a slave? Who said that you had to accept that you're a slave? That just because these black people happen to be in bondage as quote unquote Negro slaves, which we have now even discovered that that really means prisoners of war. It's better to call them prisoners of war than slaves because at least then you honoring the fact that they fought for our country, man. My man told me he was out in Hong Kong building, and he was like, yo, I was talking to some Chinese people, and I talked about the old Moorish Empire. These niggas looked at me like I talked about being related to Jesus. These niggas was like, yo, do you remember that? You you know that? <laughs> you were part of that? So, again, everybody knows. Everybody know we just ain't really get it together because we haven't decided whether or not we want to be from over there or over here. And that's where nobody want to get down to the bottom to. So in the meantime, this dude going to sacrifice as many of us as possible until we catch on to the fact that we're losing more, more of us than gaining. So in that, Right, because there's the widow's son, 
that was the ritual killing of Michael, so the killing of the widow's daughter. So remember, if you hear that from anybody else, where you heard that from, I'll be having to do that sometimes just because, you know, I give it all away. And these niggas go and then try to make, like, <laughs> oh, shit. So sometimes I got to, you know, put it out there. But in the ritual of the killing of the widow's daughter, she is now put in the position with uh, Nicki Minaj now. They want to try to blow her up to the next level because Alicia Keys is basically done. So in that, she now has to be the physical representation or the almost a slap in the face to show, see, now even the biggest black female music girl right now, she's just our, all she is is our harlot. It's a funeral. They done turned it into a funeral, like a juve. That's why somebody died whenever juve go down. Since I was going to juve from a child, because I grew up in Franklin Avenue, and FAP and all that, big up FAP, knowledge born, facts, swan, you know what I'm saying? Um, they all created a situation where they had to have the blood in order to come in. So, of course, she's going to be in the red satin with the white, with the white porcelain face at the bottom because she is the widow's daughter who has now betrayed her mother and joined up with the harlot and to become the harlot of Babylon. So now she's walking with the pedophilic pope. The pope is a sign of pedophilia as far as if you ask me. You know what I'm saying? But that's what they do. That's part of their shit. And that's what some people, if you want to respect that and be a part of that, you got to accept the fact that that's how they run their religion. And you can't tell them, white men, that they can't touch them little boys if they want. You can't do it. You can't tell them that. They done made movies. That's why Violetta Ross was able to blow up, because she played the black woman in the movie Doubt that doubted her little black son talking about he was being touched by um, Seymour Hoffman. But because she's so weak and broke down in the mind, see what I'm saying? She going to the white man's face. So she got to get the white woman to advocate for the little boy because she's too weak to do it. So then she go from that movie and then doing the next movie where she playing the um the other chick, the slave and the help. So again, how are these people representing you as a powerful, strong black woman? Other than the fact they got money, let's keep it real. Because we don't understand how they're manifesting these things into creation, because we have denied the fact that they are ritualistically praying and eating us. This is what's going on, y'all. If nobody, if you never hear it from anybody else in the world for the rest of your life, know that I said tonight that these niggas is eating you. Remember Soylent Green? Soylent Green is people. These niggas is eating you. They was telling you back then. We're eating you. We're feeding you to yourself. That's why they have to go. That's why the creator getting rid of them. It has nothing to do with whether I think it's cool or not or whether I think it's right or not or whether I like white people. It has nothing to do with what I think. This is so beyond me now. This is so beyond anything that we could imagine. Like the, the fury that's upon these niggas now. So look for another earthquake or flood, a torrential storm, a mudslide, or explosion or something to go on behind this shit because she's not happy. All I was hearing in my mind, you could say I'm crazy, you could say whatever, but all I was hearing in my mind, and Whitney Houston's voice was like, oh, these niggas think they're going to put me in that motherfucking crypt? <laughs> That's all I'm hearing. Like, no, they not. Because now we messed it up. We screwed it up for them. Because now everybody in the world that listens to this show is going to, whether you believe it or not, whether you want to accept it or not, I don't care. At this point, I don't even care. I'm so disgusted with the whole shit now, yo. This is a part of me that's like, I don't even care. Like, what, what difference does it make what I say about this shit? And what really difference? What are we really going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> and that's all I can say. And I'll share that with people who want to know. But other than that, nah, they cross the line, man. It's beyond shit now. They're manifesting all of this into creation based by a group of five laws. There are the laws, there's the law of five that they follow, but then there's another five laws that they follow. And 
and therefore you manifest that, however you manifest that, and continue to manifest that. That's the It says that whatever is proverbially presented in a negative fashion, there was something about it that, like, this is why people like criminal films but then don't want to be tried as criminals when they do crime. Some people want to do crime more than they want to be criminals. Some people want to do, be, some people want to look like criminals more than they want to do crime. You understand? Either way, it's the law of opposite that they're dealing with. So the woman who gets with the bad man, Mr. Long, woman, says, can you hear me now? They've created this now. So in that now, the law of affinity and law of the opposites get together and become the law of cause and effect. This says for every action is a reaction. Therefore, whatever you like or dislike, whatever opposite to you or like you, will come into being if you call if it causes aspect it will affect you. But then all of these laws which work are not really based on true intent. Because these laws all lead to, let's say, the law of attraction, which is the law of give and take. If I like you, I gotta give you things. If not, I gotta take things from you. See? This is how they work. Then these laws which basically work Can they hear it? What time is it? Left. Wow. Well, if you guys can hear me, I hope for the knowledge. Um, I guess we'll pick the last of it up Friday. Um, I hope it was informative enough for you. I hope it was enough for you to start to do your own research. So I think you could definitely do the knowledge. Definitely say a prayer for the sister. And, you know, look for her in the world. With because these people have crossed the line. Some spot that's in that world that is looking for some sort of redemption or whatever, you really better make it known. Because if not, it's a situation where there is no karma anymore. It's just dharma for those of us that's not with it and rapture for those of us that decide to be with it. That's what's up. So, again, holler at me at House of L at hotmail.com. Uh, class is starting Wednesday. Anybody that wants to get in tune with that, please holler at us uh, at House of L at hotmail.com. It's going to be very informative. We're going to do another blast of emails tomorrow, so look for that. Those people who holler black, uh, thank you for looking out and participating in the resurrection and ascension of our people. And uh, thank you guys for the donations and helping us get all this together. Uh, Peace and respect to Nemes Bestet, a.k.a. Whitney Houston, Whitney Elizabeth Houston, the White Island. She also uh, called Wakari, so representing the original Moorish people. There's definitely a connection, especially in that. Peace and let's pray for the family, for the king, Amon, a.k.a. Bobby, and the daughter, Arset, a.k.a. Bobby Christina. Let's send out positive associations and archetypical violet light to them. And uh, let's hold this down, man, and let's start to really take this thing seriously because all we got to do now is watch these dudes bowl because it's really a wrap. And ask yourself this. How come the president ain't saying nothing? 